I don't know what the inquiry will conclude, but it's as clear as day to any objective person that she misled Parliament, she failed to follow legal advice, and both of these are breaches of the code. And so my party has decided to also put down a vote of no confidence in the First Minister. The SNP, Sturgeon included, called for the resignation of Labour First Minister Henry McLeish for subletting his office, Conservative leader David McCletchie for expensing party business, and Labour leader Wendy Alexander for failing to declare party donations in her register of interests. Each of these transgressions are of a completely different order of magnitude to what Nicola Sturgeon has done, yet all of them lost their jobs. Indeed, John Swinney previously said that the conduct of the First Minister of Scotland must be beyond reproach. Yet the SNP don't seem to believe that they should be held accountable to that standard. They showed disdain for the very suggestion of a confidence motion, even going so far as to shamelessly hide behind the coronavirus pandemic. The Scottish Conservatives believe that this vote needs to take place to give Parliament the opportunity to have its say on the First Minister's conduct. The only option we have is a confidence motion to give this the attention it deserves. So that two months from the Scottish Parliament election, the public have the chance to make up their own minds about Nicola Sturgeon's conduct and whether she is fit for the office she holds.